I got another war video for you here. As always, stick to the end or skip to the end for the player cards. Uh, but this war is war number 10, and it's against CN, um, an Asian alliance. I'm going to be taking path 8 in section 1 this war. It's my first time taking this path um, this season. So I've got this Red Hulk here on Tyranny. And then I've got uh, Void, pretty common placement on node 12. And then I'll be moving back over to path 2 in section 2, taking a pretty familiar fight for me at this point. And then this Dormammu, I uh, plan to take with Quake. And then look at these two guys. I'm going to be taking this Sinister with Guillotine 2099. I need to build her up, and I'll, t I'll kind of talk about how I plan to do that. And then I've got this Weapon X boss um, that I'm going to bring be bringing Archangel for. So my team is going to be Guillotine 2099 for two fights. And then I'm going to be bringing Quake for that thing and for Dormammu. Um, and then I'll also be bringing uh, Archangel for Void on Node 12 and the Weapon X boss. So pretty nervous about that Weapon X, Weapon X boss. Um, but uh, here I'm going to be using this fight against Rulk to build up Guillotine. Now Guillotine is not a villain, but she's also not a hero which means that with Tyranny, she can gain power. So um, this fight, I know with the weakness that it applies, um, that, you know, the closer you are to him, um, or if you stay close to him, then you're going to get uh, weakness stacks um, mixed with his physical resistance, which increases with each heat charge. This is actually really clever placement. I, I think that this is really good placement. Um, I'm not too concerned about this fight. Um, like, I, I don't think that it's a timeout risk. I put on small boosts. Um, I just need to manage the weaknesses because if I let those stack up too high, uh, then I could be at risk of timing out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use an L2 here um, just to get my uh, counter up. Oh, I'm sorry. I, actually, I'm going to... I think I, I should have used my L2, but... Instead, I'm going to uh, I'm going to bait this L1, and then I'm going to use my L3. Uh, because you guys can see, I mean, I'm almost 40 hits in, and I've only done 40% damage, or taken 40% of his health away. So um, I'm going to have plenty of time, especially with his physical resistance, to build up uh, to an L3 again. And uh, really, the, the goal in this fight is I have to finish at an L3. I'm going to need her built up. Um, for that Mr. Sinister um, on, an, on a node uh, with heavy physical resistance that you can't quake. So, um, I, again, I, I'm just trying to manage my weaknesses, keep those off of me, or at least at like one stack at most. Um, but then I also want to try to bait his L1s. They're, you know, there's zero risk with the L1s as opposed to the L2. You could mess up and get hit. But also, he'll be uh, gaining a little bit of health with the L2, and I don't want to do that. So here, I'm actually kind of getting into a danger zone um, where I want to do damage, but um, I'm going to block these hits to gain a little bit of power because I have to get to an L3. Uh, so I get to the L3, I back off, I throw it, and at that point, um, took a little bit longer than expected, and it was kind of close towards the end. I almost killed him. Uh, before I got back to my L3, which would have been a disaster, but um, able to finish the fight there. It just took a little bit longer than expected, so uh, pretty safe fight. Now here, um, I did have to change my masteries. This war was super messy for me. It was also incredibly expensive. Now, I don't track like how much I spend per war like on units or anything like that. I know that Dreamin' does in his videos. Um, but I changed masteries, I think, four or five times. Um, that, I'm not exaggerating there. And um, with that first fight, I had um, suicides on, and then I also had max precision. Um, in this fight, I wanted to keep max precision because uh, every time he crits, he'll cause a bleed. I've also got deep wounds on for this fight, and I didn't have that on for the previous fight. And then, of course, you can't have suicides on in this fight against Void. Um, you'll, I mean, you'll just die right away. 
Um, but uh, other than a little minor screw up there, I mean, pretty safe uh, option. We've always used uh, Archangel against Void on this node, and um, he seems to be the safest counter. So this fight is uh, is so ugly. So this is a Mordo, a rank two six star Mordo. And you can see already I've made a pretty bad mistake. And I'll talk about this after this fight ends, what the proper way to play this fight is with Archangel. But um, Wally generally takes this fight with Archangel. Um, but Wally's in the military and um, he's he's had some um, you know he's had some obligations with the military and with training and stuff like that. So my strategy going into this fight without talking to Wally, I, I wasn't able to get in touch with him to ask what he's doing, but uh, my strategy for this fight was back myself into a corner, cause a heavy, and then counter heavy, and I would need to get off two counter heavies to just to do any damage because of the um, Aegis heavy. So anyway, I throw on an invulnerability boost knowing that I'm going to push him to at least a couple L3s, which isn't like the hugest deal. Um, but, I mean, what I'm trying to do is just build up as much as I can. You see that my spacing is just terrible throughout this fight. Um, I'm not, like, super concerned, but I'm going to back myself into a corner because um, I need to get off another heavy. I'm trying to get neurotoxins on him before he gets to that power gain phase so that I don't have to deal with his power gain. But I can't stack enough neurotoxins to prevent that. Um, so he's going to hit me with another L2, or I'm sorry, another L3. And, um, so I'm going to throw this L3. This is actually going to do a, a lot of damage, which is nice. But, um, yeah, I just played this, this fight really, really poorly. I'm not going to attack into him. I do have three neurotoxins up, so I should have attacked into him. But there's just so much that I'm doing wrong, and I'm so flustered at this point. Like, oh my gosh. I know that he's down under 20% already, but um, it's just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That was my last uh, indestructible. You see there, I didn't manage, um, you know, his astral evade and, and my neurotoxin. So anyway, terrible fight. Um, I took 12 hits, and this is going to end up costing me several potions. This is the proper way to play this fight. It is very simple. It's so much easier. Parry, heavy. He'll Astral Evade the very first hit, but the reach on Archangel's um, wing attacks on the heavy, is gonna it's going to get him every time. So just parry heavy. He's not going to even hit you. He'll evade you, but he won't be able to counter. So that's the proper way to play it. That's how... Uh, after I survived that fight barely, I talked to Wally, and he was like, yeah, man, just parry heavy. So live and learn. I'm an idiot. But um, if you guys do face that fight, um, you know, that's what that's what you want to do, parry heavy. So here I was actually a split second late on uh, my heavy charge to start. I ended up starting it at 250. I do have this fight sped up a little bit. It's, it's about 30% faster than normal. Because you guys have seen me take this fight many, many times. But there is going to be a point where that's going to come back to bite me in the ass. And I'm, I'm glad because I want you guys to see why it's important to time your heavy charge correctly. So again, the ideal timing is 251. Um, you can even do it at 252. So 251 or 252, that's when you want to start charging your heavy. If you do it any later than that, this is what's going to happen. So... The timers are not aligning, and I'm going to end up getting stunned before um, he's concussed from Aftershock. He's going to punch me. Now, fortunately, he gets stunned right away after that, and I'm going to um, recover from my stun before him so I can just go right back into Quake mode. Again, you have a lot of leeway in this fight because things attack without any rock stacks and without any furies is very, very small. You're never going to die just from one combo, um, so you're pretty safe. But um, anyway, so this is actually the next day. I was super tired. Um, it was my son Albert's fourth birthday, the little pup on the right. We went to uh, Lake Michigan to Indiana Dunes. I live in Indiana. These are just some of the picks from our trip. It was super fun. 
Um, but normally we are going to finish war on the, on the first night of attack. And we couldn't do that because I was just too tired and I had uh, two critical fights. So these are the happy pups. Albert is pooped. So as I. I went to bed early. Uh, so this is the next morning, but I'm throwing on a bunch of boosts here. I do have Gilly built up obviously. And let me tell you guys with guilt up, built up Gilly, this fight is very, very, very easy. Now, it is stun immune, which isn't really a big deal with Gilly's armors. Her armors are very thick, and that's why I don't use any pre-fight ability, because I care more about having um, my armor at full strength. But this fight is super, super straightforward, okay? Just bait heavy, bait L1. Um, it does have unblockable L1. But this is the last fight that I'm going to be using Gilly for in this war. And my main concern is just, um, th there are basically two things. I want to control his power, and also I want to try to uh, not bait a heavy, or I'm sorry, bait an L1 from him while he is degening from my attacks, because he will transfer those degens to me. So everything is going super, super well, and here I make um, a ridiculous mistake. I just straight up forget that there is an unblockable L1 buff on this on this node. And look at me, I'm just gonna block the unblockable attack. He smacks the shit out of me, he crits for 12k, and because of the crit, my degens, um, the ones that I placed on him, they were ticking there for 1100 damage per tick. So. Just a s stupid, stupid error. Fortunately, he's low enough that I'm not gonna have to worry about a timeout, but generally speaking, if you lose your combo, like if I were to lose my combo early in this fight, it honestly could have been a timeout. But um, I do also have the, um, the safety net of my regeneration that will proc at 15% and it's a it's a pretty big regeneration. So I would I believe I would go up to 40 or 45%. But anyway, I managed to get by on that fight. That was just a massive L1. I can't believe how much damage it did, but just pay attention when you're taking that fight, guys. It's a super easy fight. Just got to pay attention. All right. So here is kind of the main event. Now this is only a rank 2 Wolverine. Thank God. But um, strategy here is very simple. I changed my masteries yet again. I have max deep wounds, max precision. I also have three out of three coagulate. And I decided at the last minute to put three points in coagulate just in case I messed up. Now, um, I, uh, I am using an invulnerability boost. I think, shit, I can't remember. I guess we'll see because uh, I do make a mistake here. Well... It's kind of a mistake, you, you guys will see, but the strategy here is very simple. Um, he's gonna get rage charges every time you hit him, and once he gets to 25 rage charges, you see those little, uh, the red buff uh, icon beneath his health, then he goes berserk. And when he goes berserk, he's gonna become unblockable and unstoppable for a couple seconds. He'll become unblockable until he loses berserk. Um, but he'll become unstoppable for a few seconds. The reason that he didn't um, earlier in this fight is because I had uh, more than three neurotoxins on him, or at least three neurotoxins on him, so that stopped um, the unstoppable from procking. All right, but here you see I'm getting up. He's at 21 rage charges. At 25, he becomes unstoppable and unblockable, and I'm going to throw my L1 at him, and the L1 is going to push him to 25. You can see that he gets that unstoppable buff. And he is just going to pound me. Now, this is crazy. He hits me, and it does zero damage. Uh, it's actually because of the indestructible. Thank God I had one more charge. But he's going to hit me a second time. The first time that actually does any damage. It does not crit. He hits me a third time in a row. It does not crit, thankfully. And then he's going to hit me a fourth time in a row. And again, it does not crit. Now let's break down the math here because this is actually kind of crazy.
So WebNX has a base crit rate of 23%. That's not including the precision mastery, which I presume that this person placed with. So at least 23%, which means for him to not crit, there's a 77% chance. So 77% cubed is 45.65%. So that's the probability of him not critting three hits in a row. Um, Basically, what that means is I got very lucky. There was a greater than 50% chance that he would crit me. He didn't. And had he crit me, I probably would have died. If this was a rank 3, I would have died. If I didn't have that last invulnerability charge um, or indestructible, I would have died. And um, the max coagulate that I put on, you saw the, the, those hefty bleeds that I had on me after he attacked me. I don't know if they saved my life, but they certainly saved me a lot of health. It, it could have been that I finished the fight with two or three or four or five percent. Anyway, Archangel really is, I think, the best matchup for this fight, but you have to manage your neurotoxins, and um, it can get tricky if, if you miss neurotoxins or if you get unlucky with neurotoxins. But overall, I had a messy and expensive war, but um, I was 7 and 0, so an 8.59 power rating for the war. That did bump me up to fifth overall in the Alliance. Um, I don't believe I'll be top five this season. Um, I'm not really angling to be. I would rather other people be top five because of the top five cards that we're going to be um, awarding. That was my little thing with Dreamin. Sorry, it was so brief, Dreamin. DT uh, got the silver card with his power rating a little over 11. And then B Manny with the second consecutive gold card, 11.21 power rating this war. Had another boss solo. And then the legend card for this war is JD. Back in Season 7, he set the all-time uh, kills record with 109 kills. He also won the power rating title that season. Anyway, that is the war, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the little extra math that we broke down. But uh, leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.